name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Almighty, ever-living God, who willed it through water, the fountain of life and the source of purification, even souls should be cleansed and receive the gift of eternal life. Be pleased, we pray, to bless this water, by which we seek protection on this your day, O Lord. Renew the living spring of your grace within us, and grant that by this water we may be defended from all ills of spirit and body, and so approach you with hearts made clean, and worthily receive your salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom forever and ever. Amen.
us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the people at the hands of the apostles. They were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the others dared to join them, but the people esteemed them. Yet more than ever believers in the Lord, great numbers of men and women were added to them. Thus they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one or another of them. A large number of people from the towns in the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered, bringing the sick and those disturbed by unclean spirits, and they were cured. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress, the kingdom, and the endurance we have in Jesus, found myself on the island called Patmos. Because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet, which said, write on a scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, wearing an ankle length robe with a gold sash around his chest. When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. Write down, therefore, what you have seen, and what is happening, and what will happen afterwards. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked. And he stood in their midst, and he said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side. But do not be unbelieving, but believe. Then Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. From the diary of a young, uneducated Polish nun comes a feast day of divine mercy where Catholics throughout the entire world celebrate every year. On April 30th, 2000, St. John Paul II canonized Sister Mary Faustina. From 1931 through 1938, St. Faustina had received a series of apparitions from Christ that she recorded in a 600-page diary. During her canonization ceremony, the Pope fulfilled one of the requests that Jesus had made, that the second Sunday of Easter be reserved to honor and commemorate God's infinite mercy. In part, the revelations that Sister Faustina received from Jesus were nothing new. Scripture and the church have always taught that God is merciful and forgiving and that we who have received mercy must show mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. What was amazing about the revelation given to St. Faustina is that God's mercy is limitless and transforming. Divine mercy is like a boundless ocean that can flood the crevices of our human need, whether our need be physical, emotional, or spiritual. Divine mercy is when God loves, meets, and overcomes human misery, whether we suffer from poverty, oppression, sickness, or sinfulness. No sin is too shameful, no infidelity too great, no pain too severe to separate us from God and his love when we turn to him, when we turn to him in confidence and trust and ask for his mercy. Jesus' revelations to St. Faustina also proclaim that divine mercy is transforming. 
It is through experiencing God's infinite mercy that our humanity is transformed and made into a new creation. As we have received God's mercy, so must we become merciful, even as our Heavenly Father is merciful. We are transformed into the channels through which God's ocean of mercy flows to all who are in need of mercy. In order, us for, in order for us to become abundant channels of God's mercy, we must always remember that his mercy is limit, limitless, not because we are good, but because God is good. Today's reading from chapter 20 of St. John's Gospel is proclaimed on every Divine Mercy Sunday because it shows God's mercy in action. Despite the fact that the apostles have been told by several eyewitnesses that Jesus has risen from the dead, the scene opens with them huddled together in fear, holed up behind locked doors. The reading says that they were in fear of the Jews. Maybe they were also in fear of the risen Christ and what he might say or do. After all, they had betrayed, denied, and abandoned Jesus in his greatest hour of need. But Jesus was not about to abandon them, just as he will never abandon us. Just as we must never abandon others in their time of need. Jesus passes through the locked doors to reach them. Just as he passes through our fears and regrets and guilt to reach us. Just as we must pass through our own prejudices, rationalizations, and excuses to reach those in most need of us. He didn't chastise them for their infidelity or cowardice. He came with mercy, not condemnation. The same way he comes to us, the same way we are to come to others, sharing the mercy we have received. His first words to the apostles were, peace be with you. He wanted to bring them his peace, not punishment. The same peace he wants to bring us, the same peace we must bring to others. Fast forward one week. Despite all of that, the apostles experienced the previous week, seeing the risen Lord, obtaining his blessing of peace, receiving the Holy Spirit, they were still holed up, out of sight, in a room beyond, behind locked doors. The apostles who had seen Jesus believed that he was risen, but they still did not trust in his power and in his promise. Thomas, who was absent at Jesus' first appearance, had his own problem. Not so much doubt as disillusionment. Risen or not, Jesus was not the Messiah Thomas had expected. A warrior king who would free the Jewish people and lead Israel back to greatness. Like the other apostles, Thomas no longer trusted that Jesus was who he claimed to be and no longer trusted in what he promised. But things changed once he was back in Jesus' presence and heard him say, Peace be with you. Do not be unbelieving, but believe. Once again, Jesus did not condemn Thomas for his disillusionment, but showed him mercy. Thomas's disillusionment vanished as he realized that Jesus was much, much more, not less, than Thomas expected. At that moment, Thomas was transformed by Jesus' divine mercy. He was the first apostle to grasp who Jesus really was and the first to place his total trust in Jesus as he proclaimed, my Lord and my God. Today's gospel reading, as well as the revelations of St. Faustina, are not about simply believing. They are about trusting in God's divine mercy. When a man says, I believe in my wife, he is not saying that I believe that I have a wife. He is saying that he can trust her. He trusts that she will be faithful to him, that she will support his best interest, that she will never intentionally harm him. The same is true of God and his infinite mercy. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is Mark 9, verses 22 to 25, where Jesus heals a boy possessed by an evil spirit. The boy's father brings him to Jesus and says, if you can do anything, 
Have compassion on us and help us. Jesus replies, if you can, everything is possible to one who has faith. The boy's father immediately cries out, I believe, help my unbelief. What an amazing, simple, honest, humble prayer. I pray it often. There has been some dark days in my own pilgrim journey when this was the only prayer I could honestly pray. But in its very essence, it is a prayer of trust. Like when a husband says that he believes in his wife, it is a prayer of trust in God's goodness, in his providence, in his divine mercy. Jesus told St. Faustina that trust in his divine mercy was necessary for us to receive his mercy. The more trust in Jesus, the more divine mercy we will receive. He told her to pray frequently the simple prayer, Jesus, I trust you. And for all who pray it, their trust will grow ever stronger. As we commemorate this Divine Mercy Sunday, let us commit to trusting in God's mercy. Let us ask for and accept his mercy thankfully. And let us generously be merciful in return. And if we do, when our day comes to meet him, as Thomas did, he will say to us, blessed are you who have not seen but believed. Blessed are you, the merciful, for you shall receive mercy. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us bring our prayers to the Lord. For the church, that we may be transformed through our encounters with the living Christ and be instruments of healing and forgiveness in our broken world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in all the troubled areas of the world, particularly in the Mideast, and for the church in Sri Lanka, that the Spirit of Christ will transform hearts and heal divisions that distance us from one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the newly baptized, that they may continue to grow in the Christian life and surrender any doubts they have to Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to forgive, that the Spirit of God will give us the courage to forgive, guide us in being instruments of healing and signs of hope to all who are bound by sin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who must face death each day, that they may be strengthened by Christ, who died once but now lives forever, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they will rest in eternal peace of our risen Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silent prayer, let us now mention our own special intentions.
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask you to hear these prayers and those that we hold in our hearts. Continue to show us your mercy and your love. And we ask all of this through Christ our Lord.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain an ending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our lives. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop and all those who holding on to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins, Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your son our Lord we your servants and your holy people offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim this holy victim the spotless victim the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us are through this participation at the altar, Receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as 
we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
ago, a group of young people from our parish and especially Bishop McGinnis High School, Mount St. Mary's and Cristo Rey had the opportunity to go to Washington, D.C. for the March for Life. And so we wanted them to share kind of their experience. And so this morning, Wyatt Lamphair, who is a Bishop McGinnis student, will say a few words. Thank you, Wyatt. Hello, my name is Wyatt Lanfear. I am a sophomore at Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School and a parishioner here at Christ the King. In January, I had the privilege to travel with 10 of my peers from McGinnis, 10 students from Cristo Rey, and 10 students from Mount St. Mary's to advocate for pro-life legislation in our nation's capital. 
This opportunity allowed teenagers from across America to unite for a common goal, to advocate for those who cannot advocate for themselves. Sadly, in the secular culture we live in, there have been significant attempts to undermine the value of human life. However, as Catholics, we are called to push back against the abhorrent idea that life is disposable and not made in the image and likeness of God. As a result of our participation in the march, we were able to fulfill this goal. Despite not being able to vote, we were able to ensure that our voices were heard through the thousands of voices that marched through the streets of Washington, D.C. Although many times teens can feel as though their voices are not heard, I believe that we truly presented our elected officials with the dilemma of listening to their soon-to-be constituents. Another aspect of the march was that we were able to grow in our faith. We celebrated Mass as a community of Catholics from across the nation, and we were able to see religious sites such as the Basilica, the John Paul II Shrine, and were able to hear many faith witness stories from all walks of life. We were also able to become much closer to the people we traveled with. Kids from each school are staying in contact with each other, and I've become much closer to the McGinnis students who traveled with me. As a result, we've become a tight-knit group who, who broke far out of our friend groups to create friendships that otherwise would have never started. This experience would not have been possible without the generosity of the Knights of Columbus and the many hours of hard work of school officials, diocesan employees, priests, and many others who care about handing their faith to the next generation. The way the Catholic community came together for a common goal is inspiring and has strengthened my faith. To all the people who helped orchestrate this impactful pilgrimage, I would like to say thank you, as this has been a moving experience that I hope will guide me throughout my faith journey. Thank you for listening to my speech. I had the opportunity to attend that one time, and it is amazing to see a million uh, young people or people of all ages uh, marching for life in Washington, D.C. Just a few other announcements. If you brought uh, donations for the Women's Sanctuary Queen for a day, uh, please leave them in the box at the welcome desk. We will observe Divine Mercy Sunday uh, this again this afternoon with a movie about St. Faustina at 1.20 in the formal room, followed by the Divine Mercy service at 3 p.m. here in the church, and I will be available for confessions beginning around 3.30 and then the, here in church, and then there will be a brief reception afterwards. Uh, you will note that as we did for the women who went on the Axe Retreat, the men are going next weekend, there is a board in the foyer where you can indicate that you will pray for an hour uh, for the men who will be going on the Axe Retreat next weekend. Uh, New Life Day is this Thursday, May the 2nd, so school mass that day will be at 10 a.m. rather than 8.15 as listed in the bulletin. Also, we are still about $75,000 short of our annual Catholic appeal. Christ the King has never not met our goal, so we certainly don't want to begin that now. Um, so if you haven't yet made a pledge, uh, please take one of the pledge cards from the pews and bring that back. I'm also happy to announce that uh, soon-to-be Father Will Banowski will be our summer associate here for the summer, uh, beginning on Tuesday, July 2nd, and he will be here through my, uh, the end of September. And now let us pray the prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Blessed Stanley Rother, pray for us. Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.